Do you want to get your YouTube channel noticed? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. What is going on guys, Mark Roberti here. And if you are looking to grow your YouTube channel and accelerate your business with self-publishing, this is the channel for you. So definitely make sure you subscribe to get notified when we come out with future videos. But for YouTube creators, that big goal is just being able to get more people to see our videos. And once we are able to get that in place, we could think, you know, first hundreds, first thousand, and even thinking about a bigger goal like 100,000 subscribers. But it really just starts with getting people to notice our channel more. One of the things you have to do is market your own videos in order to get YouTube to initially notice you. And I do talk about that and some other strategies in another video where I talked about getting your first 100 subscribers. But the way that all the channels grow on YouTube, you see a channel that had some traction and then all of a sudden like 1,000 subscribers a month, 5,000 subscribers a month, 10,000 subscribers a month, almost out of nowhere is because they are optimizing for the YouTube algorithm. You can only do so much marketing on your own, but once YouTube sees you as a big winner, that is going to impact how often YouTube promotes your videos to their community. So part of winning on YouTube is knowing what exactly is YouTube focusing on to determine which videos are going to perform the best. And there are three key things YouTube is going to look at. They're going to look at your click-through rate. They're going to look at your watch time and they're going to look at your video's retention rate. So what that really means is that YouTube is getting people to click on your video. A lot of people are clicking it when YouTube shows it to them, and a lot of people are watching it for the duration of the video or for most of the video, and they are just spending time on YouTube. So basically, if you get people to spend a lot of time on YouTube, you are going to do very well at getting more traction for your channel. So now let's go a little deeper into each of those metrics. Click-through rate, what is that? That's pretty much you have a good title and you have a good thumbnail. That's all it is because if YouTube shows your video and no one clicks on it, why are they going to show your video when there are billions of other options out there? So when it comes to creating a great thumbnail, there are a lot of different approaches that I will be coming out with a future video on this channel that goes more into it, but you don't want to use the channel thumbnail that YouTube gives you. What you want to do instead is go into a resource like Canva and create your own thumbnails. You don't want to put any of the text or information on the bottom right of your videos because that is going to be something where the timestamp and other things like that show up which makes those important details more difficult to view. That's why for most of my videos, I am on the left, I'm on the right of the thumbnail and the text is on the left. And the color scheme you pick will make a difference between click-through rate or not. Like having a black background versus having an orange background, stuff like that is actually going to make a difference on your click-through rates. So it's very important to create a rubric thumbnail that works. You get to that rubric thumbnail by testing a whole bunch of different thumbnails. And then once you find that rubric thumbnail, you can use that for future videos, but you can also go back to some of your older videos that are performing well, but they just don't have a good click-through rate. In my definition, anything below 4% is really bad. And just anything like between four and 5% is average and anything above 5%, that is the type of thumbnail that I'm going to pay attention to and repeat. You can experiment with the thumbnails a little bit just to see what converts better because making a small change like black text versus white text or blue background versus green background, these small things can give you an extra like 1% boost in your click-through rate, and if the test doesn't work out, if it's tanking your click-through rate, you can change the thumbnail at any time. That's the thing a lot of people forget on YouTube. You can change the thumbnail of your videos, and it's good to do so, especially when you find something that's working or you realize something isn't working. There are a lot of super successful YouTubers who they will change their thumbnails within hours if they don't see it converting well with their audiences.
And it is helpful to actually do a search in your niche to see what thumbnails are already working because that can help you with framing your thumbnails for your videos and getting those higher click through rates. It's good to use other channels, thumbnails, and even video content as a model, but you do want to find that blue ocean advantage. You do want to just set yourself out from the pack, be this person who like they know who you are. You're not just another person clumped into the industry, but you do want to look at other thumbnails to get an idea of what's working the best. You figure out what's working the best by doing that search, looking at the first few thumbnails, because again, YouTube is only going to show the videos on the top of search results if they do command high click-through rates. The title also matters as well. Having like a headline that grabs people's attention and has the keyword that you're looking to rank for is going to help with that. So. For titles, it's just a little bit of an easier approach. There isn't as much thought process that goes into a title as there is the thumbnail. Sometimes I can spend 15 minutes just on a single thumbnail for one of my videos. And watch time, that's really easy. Just create longer videos because there's more to watch in a 20 minute video than there is to watch in a five minute video. So. Getting more watch time, that's just as easy as producing longer videos. Even if you get less views, the watch duration, the watch time is really going to go up. Now, obviously we want to get more views, but if you have 10 people viewing your 20 minute video versus 25 people viewing your five minute video, you're probably gonna get more watch time from those 10 viewers of the 20 minute video than the 20 or 25 people who are watching your five minute video. But just because you create longer videos doesn't necessarily mean people are going to make it to the end. And if you do create that 20 minute video and people only watch two minutes of it, that is going to send a red flag to YouTube because you may have this long video, but no one's really watching it for that long and they are leaving YouTube, which is really bad for them and they want to avoid that. And they have the means to avoid that because if we go into just like the YouTube niche or we go into the self-publishing niche or any niche, there are hundreds, but more likely thousands upon thousands of videos that YouTube can pull from to put ahead of your video because that is what works best for YouTube. YouTube's idea is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So they will look for those super popular videos that are getting a lot of retention and bump those to the top of the search results. So how do we get a better retention rate for our videos, especially when we're creating longer videos? Well, that comes down to providing value, obviously, but it also comes down to really good editing and creating that experience. A lot of videos make the mistake of just having a talking head and nothing happening in between, and it can get really boring to look at a static video with nothing really happening. So that's why I make it a point to edit my videos and include clips of different things just to make the experience a little more enjoyable. So if you do produce longer videos, but you wonder why your retention rate isn't really up to par, it could very well be the editing because value at this point has become an expectation. Like you went to this video because you wanna learn how to grow on YouTube. So at this point you're expecting to learn how to grow on YouTube. And you know, if you're with us, you know, that's great because you are with us since you're watching this part. But there are so many other videos about how to grow on YouTube. So YouTube obviously gets to pick which ones they show. And if you have the editing in play where you, it's not just let me provide value, but it's more about creating that experience where people remember you just as much as they remember the advice you're giving or the story you're telling that is going to be the type of experience that good editing provides. And that is going to be a big way to increase your retention rate. So what's next at this point? Well, we have two other ways to really accelerate a YouTube channel. The first thing you could do, especially if you are a small channel is engage with everyone in the comments. When people comment, you reply. When they reply, you reply back. So you could have one person comment on your video, like one commenter, and that turns into 10 comments because you just keep going back and forth with each other. The back and forth conversations are going to increase the amount of comments. And imagine if you do this with more and more people, not just one commenter, 
and you can see how videos quickly get 20 comments, 30 comments. You only need a few people to leave comments for it to work. And the way you get comments is, you know, by asking for them. So, hey, if you enjoyed this video, what is your big takeaway? Please leave it in the comments. I also do a pinned comment where I ask people a question because sometimes people don't know what to comment. Sometimes they're going to scroll down as they're watching the video and then they see my comment and then they say, oh, I should respond to this comment because I know uh, the answer to that question or I have an insight to provide or I just want to engage in the dialogue. So not only is asking for comments in your videos good, but having that pinned comment of your own is really helpful and then just engaging with everyone in the comments. And this final method I did talk about in my other video about how to get your first 100 subscribers, but collaborating with people is the biggest way to grow your YouTube channel. All you really have to do is just do a search in your niche, filter it by channels, find people who are coming out with videos in your niche, and then just reach out to people one at a time. And just by doing that, you're going to get a lot of yeses, you're going to get some no's definitely, but this is a really great approach for being able to accelerate your channel quickly. You are leveraging someone else's audience. That person is leveraging your audience. So pretty much you do a video that gets posted on that person's channel. That person does a video that gets put up on your channel and you're each helping each other to grow. And if you get involved in enough of these collaborations, especially with people who are already doing well on YouTube, that is going to help you grow even more. Now, you can't expect to partner up with someone who has like 1 million subscribers right out of the gate, but you can partner up with people who have similarly sized audiences as you, so you are both mutually benefiting from the collaboration. And if the collaboration goes well, it could be a sign of like a collaboration series. You could collaborate with the same people in multiple videos, so you both grow even more. Speaking of growing, that is something we talk about a lot on this channel. So if you want to grow your YouTube channel and accelerate your self-publishing brand, definitely make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, dream big, achieve greatness, and unlock your potential today.